Hello, today I'm going to talk about Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle talks about the forces that act on bodies that are immersed in uh, water or in fluid in general. In this video I'm just going to talk about uh, water for simplicity. So we know that when we have something inside water it will either float or sink, one of these two things. And the question is why do different things float in different ways and why do other things uh, sink? And this is practically what Archimedes uh, principle talks about. In this video I'm going to show a bit more physics, very basic physics, and I'm going to describe things in a bit more mathematical way not too much just a little bit I will make another video with more uh, you can say qualitative uh, demonstrations in this video I'm going to show a bit more math or physics so let's see how it goes I'm going to describe what is Archimedes principle so let's start with an example let's say I have two containers full of water and I have two balls one of them is an iron ball and the other one is a crystal ball and I'm going to use the metric system in this example like 99% uh, of the world that uses the metric system except the US and maybe some other countries so let's say the the volume of the two balls is the same it's uh, two liters I think one liter is uh, 33 ounces more or less and the weight of the iron ball is 10 kilos. One kilo is 2.2 pounds. So the weight of the iron ball is 10 kilos and the weight of the crystal ball is only 1.5 kilo. Let's see what happens when I release the balls. It's very intuitive that the iron ball will sink and the crystal ball will float, but why does this happen? Let's see if we can figure it out in a more uh, physical or mathematical way. So it's all a matter of uh, balance of forces. There is a force that pushes the, the bodies uh, towards the ground. That is the gravitational force, of course. And there is a force that pulls or pushes the bodies upwards, and that is the um, buoyancy force. The, the force that is caused by the fluid or in this case by the water. The balance between these two forces will determine if our bodies will sink or float. So let's analyze first the iron ball. In the case of the iron ball, the force that pulls it down is of course the gravity force is equal to m1g, whereas m1 is the mass of the iron ball and g is the gravitational uh, acceleration, which is uh, 9.8 meters per square second. I won't get into too many details about this. This is the classic physics developed originally by uh, Newton. Uh, I won't get into that, but the the bottom line is and what we are what we already know and because this is how i describe the example is that the gravi the gravitational force that acts on the iron ball is equal to 10 kilos because that's the weight of the iron ball that's the m1g in this case and, and there is also a buoyancy force that acts on the iron ball i will get to what this force is later but what we already know is that the gravitational force in the case of the iron ball is bigger than the buoyancy force and that's why the iron ball eventually sinks to the bottom and we have the exact same thing with the crystal ball. It has the gravitational force that pulls it down, and that is equal to m2g, which is actually the weight of the crystal ball, which is uh, 1.5 uh, kilos. That's what I said in the beginning. And there is a buoyancy force that acts on the crystal ball. And in this case, there is a balance between these two forces. They are equal. And that is why eventually the crystal ball is uh, floating. So what is the buoyancy force? I will first define it in a mathematical way and from there I will reach the Archimedes principle. The buoyancy force equals rho Vg, whereas rho is a constant that indicates the density of the fluid, in this case the density of the water. V is the actual volume of the body that's inside the water and G is the gravitational acceleration I mentioned earlier. I want to add some information about the volume. Note that in the case of the iron ball, the entire iron ball is inside the water. So when we say V, when we talk about the iron ball, I'm talking about the entire volume of the iron ball. In the case of the crystal ball, V that I'm using is actually the the part of the crystal ball, the volume that of the crystal ball that's inside the water. In the case of the crystal ball, part of it is outside the water. So that's why when I'm talking about V, I'm actually talking about the volume of the ball that is submerged. 
So let's connect the dots and see how all of this is related to Archimedes principle. What Archimedes said, and it's important to to say that when he was actually talking about this principle, he was he was describing it verbally. He wasn't really using formulas like we do in uh, modern uh, physics or math. What Archimedes said, and this is Archimedes principle, is that the buoyancy force will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body inside the fluid. In other words, or in our case, the buoyancy force will be equal to the weight of the water that is displaced by the bodies. In our case, the iron and the crystal balls. So let's see what happens in each case. This might be a bit tricky, but very interesting. Let's analyze the case of the iron ball first. I know that it weighs 10 kilos and I know the volume of the iron ball is two liters. The key question is, what is the weight of the water that uh, was displaced by the iron ball? And in this example, I intentionally used water because this makes my uh, example uh, simpler. I know that the total volume of the water that was uh, displaced by the iron ball is two liters because the iron ball is completely submerged, it's completely inside the water, and its volume is two liters. So by definition, the amount of water that was displaced is 2 liters. 2 liters of water are equal to 2 kilos. So that's why the buoyancy force that acts on the iron ball is 2 kilos. But because the iron ball weighs uh, 10 kilos, then it sinks. So that's the case for the iron ball and now we've seen why it sinks because the buoyancy force is much lower than the actual weight, than the actual force that uh, gravity deploys on the iron ball. What happens with the crystal ball? This is a bit different because we cannot use the volume to calculate what is the buoyancy force like we did with the iron ball because I don't know exactly what, what volume of the crystal ball is inside the water. But I do know two things. One thing is that the crystal ball weighs 1.5 kilos. And the second thing I can see that the crystal ball is floating. This means that the buoyancy force that acts on the crystal ball is equal to 1.5 kilos. And that's why it's uh, floating otherwise it would sink or go up but because it's not moving just floating I know that the buoyancy force equals 1.5 kilos what is 1.5 kilos it's actually 1.5 liters of water this means that the volume of the crystal ball that's inside the water is 1.5 liters so these are the solutions to the equations. What I did in this video, I combined between math and uh, Archimedes principle. And when I talk about Archimedes principle, you have to remember it's more qualitative, meaning that you can describe it in uh, words. You don't actually need uh, equations to, to describe it. The, the point is that the buoyancy force is equal to the actual weight of a fluid that is displaced by the body inside the fluid. In the next video, I'm going to show more examples for Archimedes principle and this will be simpler examples without using any math and more intuitive.